can hold good back a bit. Back towards goal, hits the post, but tapped in, and there's Sam Bell! Naismith slays a corner, that'll do it. And he make an impact right away. He'll try. Oh, yes! Well, what a week it has been for Bristol City. First beating Middlesbrough on the road before ending Southampton's 25-game unbeaten run under the lights here at Ashton Gate midweek. Six points secured, five goals scored and just four points separating City from the playoffs. Recent performances have certainly got the fans talking of a top six finish. But first, they need to come through today. QPR, of course, are the visitors. And whilst they're currently flirting with relegation, the R's boast an impressive record against City, having won seven of their past eight league matches. The exception in that sequence, Liam Manning's first game in charge. The reverse fixture back in November. Welcome to Robins TV for coverage of today's Skybet Championship clash between Bristol City and Queen's Park Rangers. I'm Alex, your host here in the studio and joining me here today is former Robins striker and QPR striker as well, Tony Thorpe. Tony, how are you? Yeah, really good, thank you. Fantastic. It's good to have you here in the studio today. This is set up nicely. Two wins back-to-back for Bristol City uh, and of course QPR, the visitors. What are you expecting today? Yes, it's uh, a different game for both teams, really. You've got mm. Queen's Park Rangers you know, languishing in the bottom three. Um, Bristol City come in off uh, back-to-back wins against two very, very good sides. As you just uh, mentioned, Southampton have been beat for 24, 25 games. Uh, and Bristol City were absolutely excellent on Tuesday. Um, so for different reasons, both teams need a result. Um, Bristol City to, to keep on the, the tails of that top five, top six. Mm. Uh, and Queen's Park Rangers obviously to to avoid a defeat uh, and stay in the bottom three. Absolutely and QPR they're going to pose a different kind of test aren't they for the side? Yeah they are I mean I I feel watching Queen's Park Rangers this year you know they do play well against the the better teams Uh, you know they do have a lot of possession of the ball Uh, and Liam Manning's side Bristol City is exactly the same you know really good in possession press high um, create opportunities Um, the pressure is on Bristol City today not Queen's Park Rangers Mm. Um, but uh, It'll be it'll be a tough game for both clubs, um, but uh, I just feel that Bristol City will just edge this today because they should be confident and high in spirits. Mm, mm, absolutely, and that would make it three wins in a row should they go on to get three points today. At which point they are looking up the table. Are, are we? Is it a bit premature? Any talk of top six playoffs? No, it's not premature. Um, they're hitting form at the right time. Mm. Um, I was looking at the results. Um, for Bristol City this year um, since Liam took over in, in November mm. um, against Queen's Park Rangers they've won 7 at 17 and Queen's Park Rangers believe it or not have won 5 at 17 um, one's langu- languishing and one's got an appetite to get in that top top six that we spoke about um, no you've got a dream it's mathematically mm. possible mm. Um, we've got some great games coming up um, Sheffield Wednesday away next week Queen's Park Rangers at home today and if they can just get uh, six to four points out of those two mm. games they are in that mix yeah it's exciting times for sure well look team news uh, is in so let's take a look shall we at how the two sides will line up here this afternoon and let's say good afternoon to Toby Osborne for the first time today good afternoon Alex yes great to have you with us there's an air of expectation at Ashton Gate today the Robins arrive hungrier than ever to continue this winning streak. On the day we mark 50 years since one of the great FA Cup upsets at Leeds, who will get the privilege of adorning that City Red today? Well, let's start with QPR. Five changes for the hoops after they went down 1-0 to another struggling side in Stoke City. The first change comes at full back with Dunn returning to the 11 ahead of Cannon. He sits alongside Bournemouth legend Steve Cook and former Chelsea man Clark Salter. In midfield, Sam Field comes in ahead of Geordie Jack Colback to partner Isaac Hayden in a deeper role. Beyond them, Hodge and Smith lose their positions in favour of Anderson and the dynamic Chris Willock. And then Lyndon Dykes returns to lead the line ahead of Armstrong. 
Two changes for Liam Manning's Reds. Tanner and Conway are rotated in favour of Ross McCrory and Naki Wells. Back four also includes Rob Dickey against his former club as he celebrates his highest individual scoring season already this campaign. Williams, James and Knight were in their scintillating best on Tuesday. They remain in midfield with Wells joining Mimetti and Bell in that attacking front line. Another position on the bench for Deere Mabude, Gardner Hickman, Tanner and the returning Scott Twine returns to the matchday squad for only the second time. Right, let's hear from the man in charge that will be in the dugout today calling the shots. It's Liam Manning. Liam, two changes today. Naki Wells and Ross McCrory coming to the side. First up, Naki. What do you expect from him today? I think knowing Naki's qualities, obviously, I think, you know, he's a constant attacking threat. He leads the line well. I think he uses his body well. Um, so, and his experience is going to be important to that with his freshness and the fact that he's desperate to play, I think, you know, is a big plus for us in that, you know, throwing him in today to, uh, you know, hopefully have a big impact. Ross came off the bench in midweek, set up Corns' goal. You're looking for the same again? Yeah, of course. He's a moment of terrific quality. Uh, you know, we spoke a lot about it, not crossing it, but passing it into the box. And I think he showed real composure, you know, to get his head up, have a look and pick corns out on a obviously, you know, terrific finish as well. So I think the start point before that, though, is obviously making sure that basics are good. Positionally, we're, we're set up, the structure's good, and, you know, we're, the behaviours that we need to show uh, are on the money. The t- starting level will excite the fans, but as will the bench. We're starting to get real strength and depth again. Scott Twine returning. Yeah, it's running. Obviously, Sykes as well. Sykes didn't get on the other night, so we. I thought it was, you know, the, how the flow of the game was going—a good opportunity to, you know, to, you know, maybe give him a little bit of extra time to get back to where we want to get him to. So he's obviously done some work this week and won this back. And that, as is Twiney, it's great to have Twiney back. He's, I know he's been slightly frustrated with his, his start here. Obviously, you know, had a, a terrific debut, but it's not been able to follow it up since. So, um, yeah, it's, it's you know, it's a real big strength at the minute that you know we can make changes and make tweaks and and, and you know and keep a really high level. We're obviously a brilliant performance on Tuesday night. A different kind of test today, but a difficult one nonetheless. Yeah, really, really tough. I think you know, there's a real danger that you know internally, externally, the expectation is you know you work off of what league tables look like, which is a, for me a load of nonsense. I think you have to you know we'll definitely be showing QPR the, the right level of respect they deserve because when you look at them and I've watched them a few times, they, they don't give you a lot of space. They're compact. They, they defend well. They're well organised and they carry a threat because they've got some good players and are well set up. So we, we have to make sure we're at our best today. You'll be giving the team a team talk at the time, but we'll be celebrating some former players ahead of kickoff today. How important is celebrating our past? Yeah, massive. I think it's, it's massive in terms of you know the history of the club. And again, there's you know when you look in the crowd today, there'll be so many generations of fans that you know I think what, what you know football clubs and what occasions are around is you know creating memories. And again, I think you know we're delighted to be able to welcome back you know some of the players from that team, and hopefully we can put on a performance for them. Well, there you go, Liam Manning, of course, talking to us uh, a few minutes ago. Um, let's talk through some of those changes then. As uh, Toby on comms mentioned, <coughs> we've got two uh, changes from the starting lineup against Southampton on uh, Tuesday night. Naki Wells, Ross McCrory. But we'll start with, with Naki against his former team. And as a former striker yourself, what are you going to be looking for? What are you hoping for with Naki back in the team? What does he offer? I really like Naki. It's just probably goals that's just missing from his game at the moment. He's been in and out of the team. He's had a few injuries. If we can, you know rectify the problems that he's had mm. he's a very very good player and he offers you a massive threat in behind which is brilliant for any team um, you've mentioned McCoy flying down that right hand side yeah. with Bell hopefully we can get down the sides of him um, Naki needs a few goals under his belt which I'm, sh- I'm sure he's capable of doing um, I've always kind of stood by him as a player because I've, I've been there when it's been tough when you've you're not creating mm. chances and you know things are coming off your shins and you're hitting them wide or you know you're not in the right place at the right time so he, you know as soon as he gets one or two it'll, it'll go again mm. um, I think it's amazing how Liam Manning can make four changes after the Middlesbrough game absolutely fantastic against Southampton and then another two changes today mm. uh, I know one of them was an injury but he's not afraid to make changes and keep everybody on their toes perfect time of the season to do it because the next 16 games there's something to drive for. Mm, absolutely. He's going to need all of the players he's got, of course, throughout the squad. And, and one uh, player I'm sure Robins fans will be pleased and delighted to see back on the bench is Scott Twine. Now, we've not seen loads of him. He played against Watford. He picked up that injury, but he does seem to be on the mend. Um, and as you say, could make all the difference in a game like today. Absolutely. He wants as many players back from injury as possible uh, for this, obviously, you know, last part of the season. Um, he doesn't want people in the, in the treatment room and it's good to have him back. Mm. We've not seen a lot of him, obviously. 
uh, Ingenie's first game, I think it was. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the Bristol City fans will be looking forward to seeing some part of him today, I'm sure. Yeah, absolutely. He's an exciting player, and uh, just under 20 minutes to go now until kickoff here at Ashton Gate. And you'll notice today, if you're here watching the game, that we're going to be playing with a newly introduced rainbow ball. Now, this is to mark LGBTQ Plus History Month, which takes place every February uh, and in the build-up to today's game our very own Taylor Gardner Hickman spent time catching up with members of the Bristol City Panthers now they for those that don't know are an LGBTQIA plus friendly football team based here in Bristol and associated with City and Taylor caught up with Panthers manager Ross Welch and uh, Lorcan Smith who's recently joined the team uh, to discuss their experiences in football the challenges that they've overcome and more. All good, guys. Good, thank you. How are you? Yeah, very good. I'm very good. Thank you. Straight into it. I think so. Yeah, you you ready, Lorcan? Yeah, sure. yeah, let's go for it. Sure. Sure. What does LGBTQ plus History Month mean to you? So for me, uh, LGBTQ plus History Month um, is a celebration uh, of how far the community has come. Um, but it's also, I think it helps to highlight the struggles that people within our community um, have gone through to get us um, to where we are. Um, and also it shows what still needs to be done in society today. Definitely. Um, I think for me, it's kind of similar. It's a good opportunity to reflect on everything that's happened in the past. And I think it's also a good reminder of things we take for granted now that actually they changed relatively recently in history. Um, if you look back at some of the milestones, they're within the past 10 years. And I think it's a good reminder that these things are all still quite new and we need to keep pushing forward with them. What is it like to be a part of LGBTQ plus community in Bristol? So I can go first on this one. So I think being LGBTQ plus in today's society and in Bristol can be tough. Um, I mean, just have to look recently, uh, one of our, one of our players and one of our family, um, was attacked, um, as they left, uh, an LGBTQ plus venue in Bristol, um, just literally walked out the door, got set upon by a few guys and, and ended up in hospital. Um, so yeah, for me, it's, cause I'm the manager of the team as well to see that happen to, to someone in our team um, is, is a lot, you know, it's, it's, and it just goes to show that what we still need to do and what people within our community do um, and what they have to go through. Um, but, you know, despite being at a time that the LGBTQ plus community is experiencing a rise in hate crime um, and hate instances, um, things are progressing um in certain areas uh and having a club like the bristol city panthers um where everyone can feel truly welcome um comfortable to be their whole authentic self which i think is really important um and a place where the lgbtq plus community can be celebrated really and not just tolerated um i think that's fantastic so yeah that would be my my response to that yeah, definitely. I mean, it sounds like you guys have got something really special down there. And obviously me only recently moving to Bristol myself. That's how I feel here. It feels like a real family. Um, and it, it, everyone here, you know, no matter what, I feel like I can rely on. And, and, and that sounds the exact same for you. So I think it's really important that you do have that proper family and someone that you can be yourself around because I think that's really important and a, a massive part of who we all are so no very good and to watch the full version of that interview, head on over to the Bristol City website now. Uh, but still to come here on Robins TV before kickoff, a trip down a memory lane as we take a look back at our memorable FA Cup win over Leeds United way back when, 1974. And in-depth analysis of our opponents today, still to come after the break.
welcome back to Robins TV. It's Alex here in the studio at Ashton Gate and joining me here uh, with Tony Thorpe in the studio. Now today's game, the club is marking the 50th anniversary of our famous FA Cup win over Leeds United. Uh, now to commemorate and to mark that event, the players on the pitch will be wearing special edition shirts, which I'm told have been snapped up this week in the club shop. There might will be one or two left if you're lucky. And as well as the shirts, the club has also produced a commemorative brochure which will take you back down memory lane. Well worth picking up a copy of that. Uh, but as for the cup game itself, 50 years ago it was two-legged, it was hard fought. The first tie here at Ashton Gate, the second at Ellen Road. Here's a look at what happened. We were listening to the radio, the, the coach radio. We, yeah. We were listening to all these names being called out. And the crowd was getting a little bit bigger, and there it was. Came out, and we'd, we'd drawn leads, so that was as good as it could get. You're playing, at that stage, the best side by results in, the, well, in Europe. For the city of Bristol, it was a massive game for everyone. Everyone stopped work. Will's factory in Bedminster was... Absolutely, it was so famous. Everybody in Bedminster worked for Wills. They were all so excited about what could be happening at Ellen Road. The top bosses actually allowed them to turn the machines off for the afternoon. They were all allowed to sit to listen to Bristol City beating the great, great team that was Leeds. And it was back in the time when there was no power. Because of the minor strike, which a lot of the youngsters today wouldn't even have heard of that, but um, it was played in the, the like lunchtime because there was no lights. The, the whole country was in a terrible state. There was, we were told there was going to be no one at the Leeds ground to watch the game, you know. So to have that day, to go there and beat them in an arena like that with 47,000 people. Nobody would give us a chance in the first game. You talk about not getting out of your half. We didn't get out of our penalty box for ages. The, the pressure was considerable. If it had been a boxing match, it would have been stopped. They battered us. They were tough, you know. They, they didn't take any prisoners. And if they tackled you, then you were quite lucky if you got back up. Ray Cashley done brilliant. Well, everybody, you know, they'd done their bits. On that day, everything came together. And the one thing they could always do was battle. And we fought like hell that day. We fought like hell. You make the ball move, so make sure you're playing at your best. Don't 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 get concerned about whether you make a mistake or not. And it's like they say in any game, you always get a chance. We had one chance. Keith had gone down the right, and crossed the ball, Richie, run behind Don yeah. that way. It was a race between Norman Hunter and myself, and I was always quicker than Norman. Uh, and I got to the ball first and it was underneath uh, Harvey's body and it was a roll and that was it. We were jumping about for about five minutes. Without, it was a, the break was unbelievable and that, you know, the referee was trying to get us started and we were trying to get off and say, let's finish the game. Needs were giving it everything that they had and it was getting harder and harder and it was hard for us to hang on. I know that we got to a stage where I didn't think we'd hang on. It was just one way traffic. Sadly for Leeds, we were on the day, it was excellent by our boys. The, the Leeds fans couldn't believe it. The Leeds players couldn't believe it. Bristol City beating Leeds, wonderful. I can't believe it's 50 years. <laughs> it, uh, it's quite frightening, actually. It's a good feeling uh, day, and that will always be the same now and in 100 years' time. So, oh yeah, they beat Leeds when Leeds had lost a game. Yeah, what a memorable uh, time for for those players involved in uh, a special chapter in the club's history. And I say uh, they're here today, uh, walking out on the pitch in front of the Ashton Gate, uh, and of course the players will be wearing those shirts. But but Tony, your thoughts? I mean, it's just it's just magical seeing those old clips uh, of what happened uh, and celebrating the players with the deserve you know the praise they deserve. Absolutely, fifty years ago, 
1974, I had the um, pleasure to spend time with these last night at mm. the Marriott in Bristol. Uh, and we had a great evening, a uh, very iconic uh, day, beating a very, very good Leeds team in the mm. FA Cup. Um, and going through, obviously getting beat by Manchester United in the next round. We'll but talk about that. These yeah. guys, <laughs> I couldn't speak more highly of every single one of them. They're absolute gentlemen, the, the lot yeah. of them. And they're, they're just a breath of fresh air. And it's, it's fantastic that Bristol City put this effort and time yeah. into the, the old school players. Yeah, absolutely. And there you are, some of the shots uh, of the players out on the pitch here at Ashton Gate and not long to go now until kickoff. Um, so let's just loop it back to uh, what we can expect from today's opponents. We already mentioned some of the changes, uh, but we've got a couple of clips to show here. We're going to start with QPR because they are going to pose a different test. Um, but here's something to look out for in terms of their defensive organisation or lack of. Yeah, lack of. Um, he's made five changes for a reason. Mm. Uh, that's terrible defending. You've got eight <laughs> Queen's Park Rangers players all within the six-yard box, just outside the six-yard box, uh, all very static, no movement, um, nobody staying with their runners. Um, and this may be a ploy for Bristol City today to, to utilise more movement in and around that area and may get some good opportunities. Um, they are very static as a back four. They have conceded a lot of goals this year, so... Mm. Um, you know, I do expect goals today. Uh, yeah. Looking at uh, looking at defending there, absolutely. And we mentioned, you know, one of the players uh, for the changes for City, Ross McCrory, coming back in. Now he was involved, of course, in our third goal uh, against Southampton midweek. We're going to take a look at this, and I suppose this is something that he can offer uh, that pace, you know, down down the uh, down the sides. Yeah, absolutely. I've seen him a few times this year, and what I like about him is, is his energy. He's, he's athletic, and he can get mm. up and down. He's powerful. Uh, and he's a great asset to Bristol City Football Club. He's picked out a great pass there. Um, I think Naki Wells has made a run to the near post, which all strikers are told to do. Uh, and he's had, the, um, he's had the quality to pick somebody else coming in there. Um, and it's a great finish and a great move as well. Mm, yeah, absolutely. And as I say, he's uh, back in the starting lineup today. Harry Cornick on the end of that goal. Now he's back on the bench. Um, but uh, I suppose that's, again, testament to what... Manning has at his disposal right now. Those players coming off the bench having an impact, right? Yeah, it's, it's, it's not just about making changes. It's about making changes and the players that come back into the team still give you that 100% effort. That doesn't always happen in football. A mm. uh, lot, lot of footballers have sulked. I know I have done in the past. Um, but it seems like he's got a great squad here that's all in it together. And that is so important for this last 15, 16 Absolutely. games of the season. Um, and like I said, I'm looking forward to the game. But um, he's not afraid to make changes. And the players ain't afraid to perform when he has made changes either. No, absolutely. Just one qu final question. Quick score prediction. I'm going to go Bristol City 3, Queen's Park Rangers nil today. There we go. All right. Well, there you have it, folks. Uh, thank you very much for joining us here on Robins TV for our match day build-up. It is time now to say goodbye to our viewers on Facebook and YouTube. And, uh, of course, for all of you based in the UK, you can buy an audio pass.